Hey guys, well today I went to see Insidious 4, The Last Key, Woo. So here I am to give you my review. Now let us start with the plot. To start with, the plot was, the plot was all about, it all centers around Elise who has been the supporting, one of the supporting, you know, like wisdom, like guide characters in the last four films. She's been like the wise old sage, you know, the one who helps the protagonist beat the scary thing. But this time this was for Elise, a standalone film. And I really liked that she got her, this was about, all about her this time. It was her driving the film this time, I loved that. So it's all about her going back to her old childhood home where so many terrible things happened. Where she unwillingly as a child allowed, opened a key to a, to a part of the further and allowed some very dark forces to come out. So it's all about her facing her fears and battling against dark forces from the further. And, uh, and letting go of all her childhood demons. And like, I think it was, it was good to see her get a standalone film. Now the plot. So the first 20 minutes of the film were all about their flashback about Elise when she was a child and the events that led up to the demon killing her mother and um, becoming out of the world. So it's all about that. And, um, and I thought there were plenty of interesting twists and turns. Like at times you think you know what's going on and then you don't know. You think like a, at one point I thought, oh, I think I know what's going to happen. And they're like, oh, no, I don't know. It was just, it was so good. I always enjoy a good horror film. There's lots of complex twists and turns. And there wasn't, okay, there may have been a few too many jump scares, but I didn't mind that at times. I thought some of them were perfectly executed, where it's like, oh, no, of course, of course he's not behind the curtain. He's standing right in front of you or behind you. 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 And the stuff in the further, the wrap-up scene, the final battles, to call them final battle scenes in the further, they were very well put together. Like, I mean, the further from what we see in the films is a very dark, frightening place, like, even in the, let's see, let's see it's chapter one, like even when we, when your man goes into a camera, what you call him, Josh, yeah, Josh goes into it in the first time, he's get, you've only, we were only there for a while, but we get the impression, we realise this is a very dark, terrifying place, and there's so many layers to it, there's the further where Dalton was in, there was the further where, well there's like, this, there's loads of parts in it, like, then there's where the girl and the other fellow went to, then like, the further is just such a place full of dark, and there's some hopelessness, and there's, no hope or anything in it, so I really was glad to see good. It was for us to be able to explore the further, further. No, or further explore the further. You get what I mean? Okay. Now characters. My two favorite characters were Lin Shea as Elise. I think she executed her part really well. Like I mean, this was all about this film was all about her facing childhood demons, and and as I said, this was her as a standalone. This was her actually fighting back against the forces that terrified her childhood and rebuilding a relationship with her brother and her nieces says and um, I just I was good to see at least um, get her own stand as be the standalone character instead of just being the the wisdom giving character so it was good to see her get her own standalone film well sort of you call her solo film but you get what I mean and Caitlin Jarrett is Imogen who as we discover like like when after one of the other sisters is attacked she then says to Elise I've got the gift and we're like a whoa didn't see that one coming Although to be honest, I wondered if one of them had the gift. But after the seller scene with the other girl, you're like, oh, nope, it's not her, it has to be that one. So it's good to see that actually that gift will be passed on. So, so that when Elise will die in the next film, that gift will be passed on to her. Well, his part will be hers. And maybe she'll become the next Elise. She'll, um, she'll get rid of all the spooky things. So let's just see. And there was... So the other characters were good. Specs and Tucker, I felt, were a little bit cheesed up in this film. Some of their company, like... Chasing after the girl and all, I thought was a little bit silly. A little bit silly. Like, I mean, like, what age are those girls exactly? I thought they were a little bit young for it. Like, I don't know what age Specs and Tuckers are, but I thought it was a tiny bit cheesy and silly the way they were chasing after the girls. I, I just wasn't keen on it. I thought it was a little bit silly. Okay. Um, any further notes? The insidious tie ins. That part where they're trying to get back to get um, the other girl back to her body. They open one of the red doors and it's Dalton. And they're like, oh, <gasps> no. So it was actually her. He saw, he didn't see the red faced demon that time. But like, it was like, oh, that was just fucking brilliant. And then the end and scenes wrap up, will all go, she actually dreamt about Dalton and all before she gets, actually gets the phone call. Phone call from uh, Lorraine or Renee. Those just, I was, I just love those tie ins with the first film were fantastic. I was just, it was really well together. And it sort of ties everything in together. So, is this going to be the last Insidious film? I think someone said it was. Uh, well, I don't know. We may have any more. We may have more. You never know. Tell me more of Elise's adventures. But until then, I enjoyed Insidious The Last King. I think you should go see it if you want a good scare. And um, thanks for listening to my review, guys. And take care. Bye.